1980s, we had a format war, so to speak, between multiple different formats. We had Sony with their Betamax format, and we had JVC, Panasonic, RCA, Hitachi, etc. with their VHS format. Sony then introduced the 8mm video cassette, which was a completely different format again, and it used a, a smaller tape and a completely different transport on a camera. And they came up with something that was, well, kind of looked a bit like this. This is one. This is an old one. One of these uh, days we'll, we'll take this thing apart and take a look at the workings of this unit here. That was in video 8. Used an 8mm cassette. The VHS guys were quick to counter with their own small tape format called Compact VHS. Size-wise, the tapes actually were quite similar. Cassette was almost the same size, except for the VHS being a little bit thicker than the, the 8mm, but the size of the cassette itself was relatively the same. The big difference, of course, being the tape inside it. An 8mm tape using a tape that's 8mm wide, and the compact VHS using a half inch tape, the same tape that goes on the regular VHS VCR. Now, both tapes had their advantage. 8mm was a metal tape. I'm going to kill that dog if it keeps howling. 8mm uh, being an 8mm metal tape. The VHS Compact being a small version of a VHS, standard VHS tape. The VHS crowd was very quick to point out, hey, you buy our format, you can put your tape into one of these things. One of these things that no longer works because... Whoever owned this one here never bothered to take the battery out and the battery won't come out now because it's all corroded so this VHS play pack is shot. No way to open this thing up. But the whole idea behind a VHS compact system was that you could open up that adapter, take the tape, plug the tape in there, close the adapter down and it would thread it out into a standard size cassette shell and then you could take that tape and plug it into your VHS machine. That's not likely to happen here though because this adapter is shot. We have a VHS-C camera here to, uh, to show you by comparison wise. Now th this is a small VHS camera our small VHS-C camera. It's not a full-size camera like this 8mm camera is, so it's a lot smaller, but the quality just isn't there. The 8mm format was a superior format to compact VHS. Here's a compact VHS camera. We're going to be taking a look at this camera today because, as you will see, we have a bit of a problem with this camera. I turn it on and open it up and load up this little tape. We'll plug the camera into our trusty monitor here and we'll attempt to play the tape. And as you can see, it's somebody's wedding that just isn't playing very good because we have a problem with the alignment on the camera. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can align this camera so that we can get the tape to play properly. And that's going to be the focus of this video today. So let's take the screws out of the side cover here so we can take a look at what's going on inside this camera if we can. So we've got this flexible PC board which has got the button assembly on it that is attached that we cannot remove until we disassemble the camera. But you get an idea of what the workings are inside this thing. We'll just zoom in here and get a close look at this. So what they did is they made the drum smaller. They went with a smaller size drum and they basically wrap the drum almost 360 degrees around the uh, or wrap the tape around the drum almost 360 degrees this is so that they can here 
make the unit physically smaller. How a compact VHS system operates compared to a regular VCR, if you understand if you understand how a regular analog VCR works, the tape is threaded 180 degrees around the head drum and as the tape is moving around the drum, the head drum is spinning. And each head, there's two heads that make contact with the tape. They'll record one, one field of information and at the end of that field, the next head is in position to record the next field. What they did for the compact format they made the drum smaller and they went to four heads. Each head is 90 degrees out of phase. You can see there's a head here, there's another head back here. And we're working on a 90 degree step forward. So the tape is wrapped, it's a little over three quarters of the way around the head drum. As the head drum spins, it'll write the first uh, video field. As it's finishing up the first video field. The next head is not the head that's straight across, but the next head which is 90 degrees ahead will then be coming into contact with the tape to start the second field. It will continue writing the second field. The third head is another 90 degrees ahead to write the first field of the second frame and the fourth head writes the second field of the second frame. So on a conventional VCR you have one rotation of the drum to write one full video frame. A full video frame on an interlaced analog system is two fields. On the compact drum it takes two rotations of the head drum to complete uh, your writing two frames basically because it takes one and a half turns, actually it takes three rotations it takes one and a half turns to write one frame. The first head, I'm going to go over there and kill that dog. I'm losing my train of thought because there's a neighbor's dog that's been, the neighbor chains up their dog and the dog just sits there and howls all day. Um, where was I going? Oh yes, the first head, this is, this is when you're talking theory, right? The first head takes three quarters of a, a, a turn to write the same amount of information as a half or 180 degree, so it's uh, 270 degrees of uh, head drum to write the same information as 180 degrees on a full size drum. See I have to put up with that every day. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but how would you like to have to deal with that every day? Anyway, we're going to take this thing apart. And I'm going to show you how to do the alignment on the tape path so that we can make this tape play back properly. As promised, there's the inside of the mechanism. When we put the tape in, you'll see what happens. Well, you see that nice complicated tape path? The tape is actually wrapped starting here and the exit guide is over here. So it's wrapped almost 360 degrees. Uh, the, the actual uh, path that is covered is uh, 270 degrees of, of space. And now I just have to find myself a little small hex key that is used to adjust the tape path on this. i to find the right one that fits it. I think that's the one that fits it right there. So we'll play the tape back and we'll see if we can get the alignment back to uh, being able to play this tape properly. Well, as you can see here, we've got an alignment problem on this camera that we need to adjust. Uh, the tape was fine. The tape is recorded fine. I put it in my own machine uh, using my adapter, my adapter, and it plays fine. So um, the client that owns this wasn't able to play their tape back and their cassette adapter as I just showed you before they let the battery go corroded and you can't get those adapters anymore so they brought me the camera to see if I can fix the camera so that they can at least play this wedding tape back so we get set up to do the alignment get the allen key here, hex key we're going to make adjustments to the P3 and the or I guess it's the P2 and the P3 guy 
don't know what they call them on these ones, but anyway, the two guides are here. So as we go to adjust the guides here, I just say that the problem was mostly at the top portion of the screen. I'm not going to bother putting a scope on this one to do it. Um, there are test points in here that I could hook up a scope. I just got to find them. I don't even know where they are on this one. They probably in the, this is be the head amplifier here. There should I think this is the head amp in here. There should be some test points in here, but I'm not going to bother because you can usually eyeball this pretty pretty quickly. Put my Allen key in here and adjust the tape path. Okay, it's getting worse now. And now it's getting better. You'll see that as I bring this thing into alignment, the picture will improve. There we go. And then the other guide. That was the that was the P. Yeah, that was the exit guide. This is the entrance guide that I'm adjusting here now. So this guide here affects the portions of the picture at the top. And the other guide here is the bottom portion of the picture. And we can actually get it looking very good. It may not be a perfect waveform. If I put a scope on it, it may not be a perfect waveform, but you know what? It's, uh, it's good enough. Now they can play the tapes back and uh, this particular client has a whole bunch of tapes that were made and um, they were unable to play any of their tapes back and again after the um, after their adapter failed on them uh, I gave them a quote to transfer all of their tapes over to DVD and said, told them I would do it for them <laughs> They don't want me transferring their tapes over. They want to do it themselves. So uh, next best solution was to fix their camera so that they can play their tapes back. And we've done that on this video. So there you go. That's how you uh, adjust the alignment on a VHS-C camera. So before I put this thing back together, I figured we'd go through the, op the, the tape path itself and how the tape is wrapped from a different angle. So you can see, if we look down here, you can find something to point with. Tape is pulled out from the cassette and it's wrapped around. It's pulled out around the erase head here. Actually, this camera I think has got flying erase heads on it. Uh, it's pulled around this first guide. This is the entrance guide. From here, it wraps all the way around the drum. Comes out on the exit side guide down here. Then the tape is pulled across the camera. Now this is critical because the distance required uh, for the audio head has got to be a specific distance from the video head, otherwise your audio would no, would not be in sync with your video and that's especially critical because the idea behind these compact VHS uh, cameras was that the recordings made off of this camera was compatible with a conventional uh, VHS machine much like the old beta movies uh, Sony had and I'll show you one of those in a future video uh, the beta movies they were recorded using a single head and a 360 degree wrap but what they did was they time compressed the video they changed the frequency of the horizontal scanning uh, circuit to time compress the video so that when it was played back on a conventional beta machine it appeared at the correct speed so you couldn't play back a recording made on a beta movie without a monitor that was modified to operate at the higher speed they were a record only device but anyway that problem was solved by going to four heads instead of one head or a double azimuth head as in the case of the beta movie anyway when we eject this thing you'll see what happens here just like that so on this machine here you've got you can see the heads down here There's one head there other head there's a flying erase head followed by four video heads which are 90 degrees out of phase with each other there is no I don't believe there is a straight uh, oh yes there is an erase head on here as well there's a, a main full erase head which is right over here 
and then you've got the flying erase head on the, the head drum. What the flying erase head does is it gives you uh, good edits between shots. It, when the tape backs up slightly, uh, when you press the pause button for example, the tape backs up slightly, then when it starts rolling forward again, it uses the flying erase head to erase that last couple frames of video, make a nice clean uh, insert edit and a nice clean assemble edit. Anyway, uh, that's the inside of a VHS-C camera. This is a Panasonic Cam or Panasonic Palm quarter, and the model of this one is uh, I don't even know what it is here. Does it say? It doesn't say it on here, but I'm sure it says it on the bottom. It doesn't say it on the bottom either. Somewhere on here, there will be a model number. Anyway, I'll put the model on the video. It's a Panasonic Palm quarter. There's how to do the alignment on it. I should point out that when putting this back together there is actually a trick to doing it. The There's a catch underneath here that you have to it has to catch it hooks this way underneath the cassette housing. Right? This catch here. So if we look at the two catches this catch here has to hook in around here and then this other catch hooks in under this bar here. So it's kind of a trick to get these things back together. It's a mistake that a lot of people would make is that they, they would come in and you always knew if somebody had gotten into the thing tried to take it apart because the uh, cassette housing was, was uh, sticking out on one side. So it's kind of a bit of a trick to, to hook these back together and get them to, to go properly together. When it's done properly the unit will sit flush like that and it won't be sticking out on one side or the other and I remember countless times when these things came in the shop you could always tell when someone was trying to get a tape out because they would uh, take the screws out and go to lift the cover off and not know how to get it back together properly and then it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't be fit together anyway here's another one that's fixed and let's just see whether this thing's got a model number printed on the back. It probably has a model number printed back here somewhere. It is a model PV11D. There you go, made in Japan. This would be, I know it's got a year on this thing, but as you can see, it's got a, a, a DC in connector. And there was a, a special cord that went from here to the power supply and everybody loses them. That's pretty common. So let's get a couple more screws to put in this thing to, to hold the the camera back together and then I can get this one on its way and uh, make another person happy. There you go. We'll catch you in the next one.